Hello everyone, Wangjok here, and welcome back to the Cabal Let's Play. Now as we start today's episode off, you can see that in the distance of Engwim and Vorpal's hordes are the ruins of Nagorand, burned down by a man's desire for forbidden knowledge, as Engwim's quest to obtain said knowledge has taken him to the centre of the Witch King's lands himself, and once he was defeated by Vorpal in battle, his city was burned down. So now that we've managed to get our first cache of bitter knowledge, it's time for us to start making our way down towards Ulfran, where we're going to be going after some more, as well as potentially get a greater demon of Zeech to join us, once we get the book of course. But not only that, you may notice we've got a new banner joining us here. A new character offered to me by Anna Ruud Bacalo, a longtime commenter on the channel. And this guy's name is called Leluch Hagarov, a Chaos Lord of Corn. Now, why has he come down here? Maybe he was drawn by the violence, the bloodshed, and the skulls collected as Vorpo and Engwe have made their way around Nagarov. Maybe it's because of the pacts that he has made with Engwim. We don't know. But he has now joined us. Now, this guy is a Chaos Lord with the strong traits that is the ideal choice for him, I must say. So, as you can see, increases his armor, melee attack, and weapon strength. Not only that, because he is an established lord, I've given him a few magical items already, so I hope they are suitable for you, Bacala. We've got Spell Shield, which increases melee defense and magic resistance, a fitting choice for a follower of Korn who is, finds magic in general to be distasteful and dishonorable. So having something that actually increases our magical resistance is a good choice for him. We've got the Ogre Blade as well, increasing his weapon strength. The Obsidian Lodestone to give him more magical resistance. And the Crown of Command, an interesting choice given his backstory that I do have written around here somewhere. I better find it before I actually hit the end turn. But as you can see, it makes anyone nearby unbreakable for 90 seconds or something like that. But it's oh, 30 seconds. I'm looking at the countdown timer afterwards. But a very useful one as well. Not only that, we picked up the Norse Berserker, which means we get more casualties captured post-battle. Maybe as a result, more favor to be sacrificed, well, gained by sacrificing to corn. But there we go, the Luch Hagarov has joined us. Now, not only that, we have got a couple of things being built at the moment. So with Emgrim, we're upgrading our Chaos Dwarf Camp so we can actually get access to Fire Masters, which are the Chaos equivalent, shall we say, of the Iron Drakes. And we're upgrading the Cult of Zeech itself, increasing our corruption campaign movement, and giving us access to the Guards of Change and even a Chaos Dragon. That's going to be pretty cool to try out. Now, unfortunately, yeah. Luch has got quite a long way to go before we can actually join those ranks and actually get his own cult set up. But he's made his way down. It's been a long journey for him. He's got time. Plus, when you consider we've got like plus 14 growth at the moment. That's going to make things much, much, much easier. Especially all we need to do is just raid a couple of places and then that should give him a good start. Can't do much with him though for this term. I can't even recruit any new units because he's only just been recruited himself. And we do want the rest of these to have an opportunity to be built up. Fat Vorpal, you're pretty much done now. I did want to see though, what new units could we give for his last slot? So we picked up a few, uh, with the upgraded... In fact, let me just check on here. Will this tell me? We can get Knights of Nurgle, with Lances and without. Giant Beasts of Nurgle. Chariots of Nurgle and the Putrid Blight Kings with a Scythe. Those could be quite interesting to try out. But I'm interested to find out the giant beasts that we can probably find somewhere in this. So many to choose from now. We also got Chaos Giants. We could recruit one of these as well. That could make an interesting addition. Giant Beasts of Nurgle. Here we go. The product of too much corruption in an area. These things combine the features of several different creatures, fused into a nightmarish being, creating a terrifying abomination. I have a feeling this is the equivalent of the their own version of a giant. But we're going to recruit one. I'll make a nice addition to Vorpal's army, especially with the backstory that Drake has provided in the comments of the last video. Maybe that's Nurgle's reward for such a prize, who knows. But anyway, these guys are going to wait up for one more turn, or two turns I should say, with Vorpal. And then we're, what we're going to start doing is making our way back down here, head towards the Forge Bound, which are our vassals at the moment, and maybe help them out a bit by going after some of these other places nearby, before we make our way across to Ulfran. 
Now what I'm planning to do now is head down towards Lothan because here I believe is where we can get access to the Lord of Change. But we can go through here, bypass then all the, the Phoenix Gates and so on. And then make our way back through the inner circle of Ulfran towards Gale Vale. So we can go after the third Book of Knowledge. And let me just double check here. Yeah, Lothan gives me Yuzol the Storm Chaser as a Lord of Change character. This one increases Hero Rank Recruitment and Winds of Magic Power Reserve. To be honest, that one I feel is much better than that, given that we've got a lot of power reserve already. But once we capture these two, we're going to have to decide where to go next. We've got Itza, we've got Exotal, we've got the Awakening, we've got the Black Tower if we so chose to head down towards the Tomb Kings. So many different choices. Anyway, that is enough for this turn actually. Let's hit enter, where I can now share with you, well, put me in Hagaroth's story. Now, unfortunately, I'm looking around. I did have it written down. It must have disappeared. Okay, let me uh, paraphrase. If you want to check out what Bacala actually wrote, you can check out, I think it was the first or second video. I'll link it coming up on the screen right about now. But before we actually became known as Hagaroth, this uh, man, oops, Clan Rictus, <laughs> really treach. Um, well, on the plus side, <laughs> This is going to be an interesting fight. I'm not going to fight it because it's going to be a very easy one. But congratulations, Lelouch. You've managed to pick up your first victory in battle. Before, just as I was talking about you as well. And that's a lot of favor we picked up from fighting Treach. And we picked up the Scarecrow banner as well. Okay, anything else? Fine. Okay. That was easy. <laughs> okay. But before he was known as Lelouch Hagaroth, he was a strong lad who actually was a son of a noble family. Well known for his skill with the blade, I remember he eventually joined the Reichsguards, a, the personal, you know, secular knight's order and the personal bodyguards of the emperors, being established a couple hundred years ago. It's a fairly new order, basically. What happened then is that as he was with the guard, he managed to take part in several battles and obtained several duels, including fighting a vampire. I can't remember if he said it was Conrad the Bloody, although timelines might be a bit off if that's the case. But we'll say if you fought a vampire, a lord, and managed to win. As a result of this, he managed to reach the higher echelons of the Rakes Guard, where eventually he was sent off to try and fight a battle against Sigvold the Magnificent. He was then captured by Sigvold in the battle, and the sort of incident which caused him to actually lose, you know, the fact that he actually lost a duel thing was enough to almost break his mind and give the just the crack that was needed for Korn in order to, to sort of persuade him to be converted. So he made it, he performed his duties quite admirably. He fought several great foes in his thing of becoming a follower of Korn, facing Sigvold several more times in battle, and in, as a result, actually becoming rivals with one another. Which kind of fits when you think the um, hatred between followers of Korn and Slanesh. But that's me just paraphrasing off the top of my head. So if you want to check it out, like I said, I've linked it in the pop up thing coming up, so you'll be able to see for yourself what was written. But, Scarecrow Banner, to be honest, this is not a, the most useful thing, although, saying that, as we're going to be going up against High Elves, the fact they have access to things like the Phoenixes and so on, that could potentially work out better for us, I guess. Craven by name. Wow, what's this? Turn him and running away under the auspices of coming back or reinforcements is just running away, and the mark of a coward to boot. <laughs> but that is, like, the main principle of Skaven tactics. Being in the back, meaning that you can overlook your minions as they fight, and then if something goes awry, you can actually go off to get reinforcements. That is the Skaven way of war. <laughs> I like that. But increasing his speed by 12%, that's a massive bonus. Leadership plus 4 doing subterranean intercept, not so much, but that bonus there is quite good. Very good, in fact. But... There we go, Lelouch has picked up his first trait and won his first battle as well. Against a worthwhile foe, in my opinion, a legendary lord of nothing else. But, we need to start moving our armies. Engrim, you should now be ready to go. You are. What I think I will do, as a personal favour to Lelouch here, is if I switch over to Lelouch, thank you, let's go over here, and I'm actually going to give you 
two characters of Chaos Lords, warriors, just so we actually have a sort of personal guard for him, so to speak. Anything else we want to try and bypass? Chosen of Zeech, Mira Guard, I'm not going to give you any of my Chosen. I'm sorry mate, but they're mine. <laughs> Everyone else basically is a follower of Zeech, so I'm just going to leave it at that. But there we go. For Lelouch, I'm going to have to call you Hagoroth. I can't get over Lelouch. Sorry, it's just we're not rolling off the tongue as well as Hagoroth. But at least now he's got his own personal guard. Now, let's us continue on our way down. Now, what something that was pointed out to me as well is if I look at the ruins and they see that they haven't got a Chaos Altar on it, it does suggest that the Skaven may have sort of marched in and occupied it. So it might be worth us just popping by the ruins of Hagreef just to see if we can pick up anything of use or even just fight some more Skaven. There we go. Okay, I think this is going to be a nice easy battle. There we go. Let's... Where is it for the... Christ, we don't actually get much of this. Let's just try and get a bit more growth, I guess. There we go. Perfect. You can continue on your way then. Lelouch. Sorry, Hagoroth. I'm going to keep calling you that now. Um, Oh, you can't move. Why can't you move? Okay, no matter. Maybe it's because we just had these guys added in. Who knows? But we'll keep you here then. I think you should be safe... The best safe than sorry, Vorpal. We better keep you nearby anyway. Alright. Hagoroth, let's give you Wild's Marcher, and I'm going to give you Eyes of the God. There we go. Okay, who else we got to upgrade? Engrim himself. Okay, do we pick up any new items? Eye of the God's Aura. We could increase his magical abilities again, like we've got Lighter Battle to go for, Extended Effect Duration. Got Lightning Strike. Any of these are going to help out? Horde Recruitment Capacity. We can take one of those. Otherwise... That would be a nice little bonus. Let's go for Banishment. Let's increase our magical abilities again. And then a cold. What can we do for you? I think at this moment you've actually pretty much done. You got your Manticore. You've all your magic has been leveled up to the top tier now. Yep. Immortality. Definitely grabbing that now. In that case, we'll give spread corruption as well. There we go. The first of our chaos heroes. To act, well, the only chaos hero, but the first character to actually get immortality out of all of them. So well done, Acold. Not surprising, really, considering how long he's actually joined us in the uh, campaign. But you know. Okay, let's hit enter in once more. Now something else to bring up as well is after I recorded the last New Mass campaign uh, video, I noticed that something had popped up where it, uh, there's a new DLC coming out for Warhammer 2. The hunt, uh, what was it, the Hunter and the Beast, if I remember the name correctly. And from what I saw off the trailer, I loved it. I thought it was such a cool thing, like that little bit, which reminds you of the war wagon and the, the giant dread saurian, what challenging after it. Come on, Jurassic Park, yeah? But I thought it was a really cool, I love seeing the Croxagors and that, and reading through the mechanics for both the new Imperial faction with Marcus Wolfheart and Nakai the Wanderer, they look fantastic. What I'm actually thinking about, guys, is when the New Mass campaign comes to an end, I will put up to a vote on possibly doing a campaign with one of them too. Now, obviously, we spent a lot of time with Warhammer already, so I will put up as a third option about picking another Total War game to play instead. But I will put that as a vote once the New Mass campaign has come to an end. But both factions look really cool. I must say, Nakai with his unique horde mechanic, as well as the fact that he has a unique vassal relationship, we could say with the, defend was it the defenders of the pylons, or whatever it was called, and then Marcus Wolfheart with the unique heroes with their own backstory, as well as this, just the fact that he's here in Illustria in the Vortex map. Wow, I'm really looking forward to checking out the DLC and the new creatures that come along, like that Dread Saurian. Wow. I was just blown away by looking at it. I really was. <laughs> anyway, um, let's continue. We've managed to burn down this. Let's just make our way slightly now. So we've got 25% left here. And then we can give two more units then towards Engrim's Horde. So if we pop onto here. 
Can we actually upgrade anything else? No, not yet. If I want to get my next level up, I, which I'm tempted to go for this Dragon Ogres. 12 population surplus. Unless we wanted to try and do something like... Maybe go for Arcane Vortex. I mean, that would be quite thematic when you consider that we're trying to get sorcerers and that in the armies. Yeah, probably go for something like that. Let's recruit a few units for you, though. Now, we do have access to the Guards of Change. I wouldn't mind trying those out. Although, their stats... Not exactly the best, so I will say. In fact, Chosen are much, much better than them. Huh. In fact, let me just hold this a minute. What's their bonuses? Soul Stealer. So they have a one-use bound spell, causes damage to combatants and absorbs hit points. That's pretty cool. They've got the Chilling Aura, reducing enemy speed around them. St the ability to hide in any terrain, immune to psychology. Okay, they do have a few interesting skills and traits here, I must say. Might be worth just checking out to see what they like in battle, but I'm actually looking at some of the other stuff. Firemasters, anyone? <laughs> Tempting. But I'm actually wanting to check out Chariots of Zeech. Let's check that one out. And what we got? Knights of Zeech. I think that would be a good choice for us. Chaos Dragon. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, let's get one of these joining. This will replace the Manticore we'd lost in one of our first battles with Engrim. But there we go. That's that sorted. Looks like we've got Nagawan bringing in armies now towards here. So I think it's time for us to start moving on with the journey. So Lelouch, let's bring you down here first of all. You're going to go and investigate the ruins of Hagrief. Just see if you can find any new items for your master. Sorry, master? You're um, the person you're oath sworn to. So, for this one, this is one of the old one puzzles I actually know about. Basically, solitude is always desired. You need to find the one thing that doesn't repeat itself. So, for example, this one here is repeated up there, that one there, that one there, that one there, and that one there. Which leaves, uh, actually, crap, I just lost my train, my train of thought. Hang on. Uh, no, those two are very different. That This one, then. There we go. I picked up the obsidian trinkets and a thousand favor. There we go. Right. You can make your way down there then. Vorpal, let's start bringing you down as well. I mean, we could go after some more elves though. Could do. You know what? We've fought enough elves for today. Let's continue down. And like I said, we'll start making our way along towards here. We're going to be facing a few anyways. We've got the forge bound, but we also got like... Corfish ish life quencher. Now well, that's a name. Foolish request. <laughs> okay, let's bring you down. What I think I'll do next is actually have it so Engrim is going to raid up another two turns just so we can keep that chaos dragon. Because let's be honest, who doesn't want a dragon in the army, you know? Nope. Told you what you need to do if you want to become peace with me. You need to become my vassal. It's going to work for the Forge Bound. It's going to work for you as well. What we need to do is just accept that's going to happen. Although, saying that, I wonder if he's going to actually pull this off, Leaf Swordson. What do you want, Treach? I tell you what, become my vassal. Nope. No matter. No matter. I mean, this is their choice. Engrim knows that everything is just going to go according to plan. It's not going to be the same as Creed, obviously, from Warhammer 40k. But, oh, that, that's a funny ba sort of meme that goes around. Everything just goes according to plan. <laughs> but, a very fitting bit when you consider it's Engrim we're talking about. Besides, according to Drake, in mean, Materium's characterization, I just love the smug little way he says it. <laughs> right, we picked up our Chariots of Zeech. I look forward to seeing what they're like in battle. And then we've got two more turns until we get our Chaos Dragon. Okay, the Luch Hagoroth, let's bring you now towards here. You better join us in the next turn. You can might as well come up as well, Vorpal. 
Right, looks like they managed to recolonize Nagavans. No matter, it's going to take a long, long time for that to be rebuilt. And when you consider that we already got what we needed, we don't need to worry about it much more. Hang on. Venom Gate had grief. Okay, the Forge Brand's still there. I was looking for a second for. Hang on, when are we at war with them? We're not. There we go. <laughs> That's what I was expecting. But it looks like they managed to defeat the army that came to attack them at the clan command. Okay, that's good. So like I said, we're gonna basically march away along towards here, I think, and then just make the sail over towards here. So we need to take out, we can take out a few places along the way, so forge bound can increase in size. There we go, another quick turn. It's just gonna be a marching band at this point. We do wanna make sure that Hagawarth gets an opportunity to try and level up a bit, a bit, in particular so we can get access to the Cult of Corn. But before we can get that, we need to upgrade the camp itself by one level. If I remember correctly, he can't get the Cult into level 2. So I think by this point he should be able to do it. We'll let him lead the assault on Daldrak's lair. Just so, with the fact that, let's be honest, it's pretty clear that Skaven are infesting the holes and burrows in the place. So if we go down there, we can take that, and then we'll be able to level him up a bit more. Yeah, that will work out quite nicely, I think. Although I'm curious to know how long the Hmong are going to be sticking around at this point. Ah. That's where the army just bit. Oh. Oh no, that's not the army. Where did that army disappear to, I wonder? No matter. Okay. Are you a god? Uh, let's bring you a little bit closer, Vorpal. Nope, but apparently we can't move it inside oh, the unknown reason. We can't fit it inside this zone of control. Strange, you could say. Right. Engrim, yes, Hagoroth, coming in and investigate. Quotation marks included. Okay, a nice easy fight. In fact, let's give that to one of your commanders. There we go, decisive victory. Alright, let's raise just raise it so we can get a bit more growth for him. Exterminator. Well done, Engrim. And we picked up a scroll of blast. We can now use a nice little magical effect. Picked up the possessed as well. There are souls that have been truly blessed by the gods, not quite spawn, but have received many gifts nonetheless. So Vorpal has now picked up a new follower that gives us 10% research rate. That's a nice little bonus. Okay, you have now leveled up and we're definitely going to have to start giving you some of that horde growth. Let me just double check. Yeah, we need to get up to level 2 and we need to get 4 points of population surplus. Would like to, do I want to upgrade this? Hellriders, Warders, Sensors, Hunters. We may do. Just for a bit of variety, but then we do definitely want to try and give you Chaos Lords as well. Okay, that's fine. Let's pop on to sign in these. So definitely want to go for the Tribes of Chaos, just for the first this point. That would end a bit of extra population surplus, plus 24. Means it's going to be... Oh no, hang on. That's with the events as well. Still, with all the bonuses, it should work out fine. We'll give you that. Engrim, what are we going to give you now? Gavin and Might, don't need to concern myself too much with that. Now, let's go Time Warp. And feel free to burst in song, guys, behind your screens to uh, the Awaki Horror Show. Right. Vorpal, what are we going to give you? Going for Lightning Strike will be pretty handy, as well as Unholy Resilience. I mean, that's a massive bonus. For Lords, actually. Huh. So that increases his healing ability, basically. Right. And very fitting when you consider that it, we're talking about a follower of Nurgle. We'll leave it for now, though. Let's instead continue upgrading his magic. We did up to Arcane Conduit. Okay. Let's go Plague of Rustling and Glittering Robes. Yeah, let's do that. Alright, anyone else need to move along? Vorpal, can you not? Oh, yes, you can. Okay, 
Don't need to go after them. Is there anyone else? Head down towards Venom Glade. There we go. I'll give him something to do. We'll send Hagaroth down then to join him. And then that will allow him to continue building up his sad army's growth. I'm going to have to double check though, given the fact that he's already got those bonuses now. How much is his growth going to return? Because let's be honest, if it's going up by one population surplus every turn like it is for the other two hordes, there's no point really worrying about building it up, like having him attack places just to get the horde growth. Oh, <laughs> interesting. So Corvavish Life Creature has brought in a few units, Sisters of Slaughter, the Exhort, and so on, to attack my vassal here, Corval. Now, don't need to fight this. Nice and easy. Let's sacrifice him for some more favor, always useful to have. But thanks to that, we've actually eliminated one of the main armies of Har Grief that we can just go down now and take the settlement, nice and easy. It's a shame that we can't persuade the other our vassal to actually try and go and colonize the settlements here. Because I'm a little bit concerned in case Nagawan decide to get any funny ideas and come down and do it themselves. Fine, let me have a look. Core events, characters, plus three. Yeah, he's going up by nearly to his own ones every turn. Okay, let's bring you down here. We'll give you 25. So we can get started, first of all, by actually increasing your horde. So we need to do that. That actually gives me extra horde growth as well, doesn't it? Yeah, just slightly more. But we can let that happen. We're also going to give a couple more units to him. So let's have a look. Let's get two more orders. Do we want to give him any of these? Kind of like the idea of actually giving him the Swords of Chaos. I mean, going by Bacala's backstory, I remember him talking about how he might be being unhappy, shall we say, that Archon became the Everchosen. So having a sort of Chaos unit, you can argue maybe you're there to help him or just keep an eye on him. But let's recruit a unit of that to his army as well. There we go. Okay, you've now got your cool Chaos Dragon. I'm looking forward to seeing that in battle. Let's have you start making your way towards Hotex Column, I think. There we go. Alright, anything we can try and do diplomacy-wise? Let's go by strength. So, for example, Hargreave is still pretty weak now. Are you willing to become my vassal? You are not. Okay. Mung already, Fordbound R, Clan Rictus. What about you? No. Nope. None of these want to become my vassal. I mean, the Forge Band was so willing to do so. But it's their choice. Okay, let's bring you now over to Venom Glade. In fact, if we go and attack this army outside the settlement. Oh, he runs off. Okay, again, nice and easy. We'll give the. In fact, I'm going to give that over to Hagaroth. Come on, Banner of Rage, Corn. Yeah? You see where I'm going with this? Right, let's order resolve that. And let's just loot and raise it. We don't need it. Fear of Aramar. Huh. One bound spell gives you minus 24 leadership and 18 vigor. Interesting. Magistrate, horde board a bit lower. Horde building construction cost minus 8. Think. That will be a nice little addition to Engrim, I think. Let's have a look. Cultists, yeah, let's swap that out. Or can we not? Apparently not. Huh. Okay. A cold, what about you? Nope, can't do that either. Okay, Vorpo. Ah, oh, you might have picked him up. Magister. Yeah, that's okay then. But like I said, I'm going to swap over though. Let's give you. At the mark of Zeech. Oh, you can get a Magister. Okay, we'll give that to you. Scarecrow, Cultist, Cultist, Possessed, Possessed. Banner of Rage. There we go. Sorted. 
Right, what skill points do we need? Vorpal, some more stats for you. 1822. Okay, just so we know how far we need to go before we can get there. Illumination, serve or die. Yeah, that would be useful. I tell you what, let's go Gehenna's Golden Hounds, so we finish that off. Then let's go for point in despoilers. Actually, that's pretty good. To despoil, to corrupt, and ruin. Sounds very fitting. There again, so is ruinish. Yeah, let's go for ruination then. So next turn, we're going to give him unholy resilience, because I think that's very fitting for a follower of Nurgle, as well as the ability to get lightning strikes straight after. So he'll be able to fight battles a bit more evenly once he's on the offensive. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, is actually the end of today's episode. Now, they've quite foolishly decided to colonize Velum Glade when there's an enemy army right outside the settlement. What a stupid, stupid mistake. Alright, looks like Hagorov's going to have a chance to build up his horde a bit more once we send him down there. But like I said, for the next episode, we're going to continue along to the coast on the eastern side, where we're going to sail over towards Ulfran and start having some fun with the High Elves over there and bring chaos and corruption to their land. Okay, Hargreave, I've really told you what's involved. If you don't accept it, you die. Easy as that. Plus, like I said, we're also going to have to sort out a little vote for Numas, but I'll talk about it once the Numas campaign has actually come to an end. But, for today, that is the end of this episode. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope you join me next time for more Warhammer. But until then everyone, take care, and goodbye for now.